Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to create a very interesting and cool looking background, which is super cool and super easy to create. So instead of adding those very simple plain flat backgrounds, you can create this kind of animation and design and make your background stand out. So it's going to be really fun and interesting. So without any further ado, let's jump into After Effects and get started. So before this tutorial starts, I want to introduce you guys to Create Pack, which is one of the amazing After Effects pack on Video High. Over 3600 plus fully responsive animation elements that automatically rescale for your composition, which you can preview and import with just one single click. Dozens of categories with everything you need to create some awesome motion graphics without wasting any time. Download the Create Pack from the link in the description below. All right, so here we are in After Effects. Let's start by creating a new composition, which is gonna be 9020 by 1080, 30 FPS and 10 seconds long. Let's call this main as our main composition, hit OK. So let's start off by creating a new background. So I'll hit Control Y to create a new solid, call this BG for background, doesn't matter what color it is because we can add a gradient ramp on this. So go into effects and preset, double click to apply a nice gradient ramp. Let's pull up this point right over here and this one right over here. Now you can go ahead and add any of your favorite color that you want to use. I'm going to use a nice purple for this one. Maybe make this one a nice bright purple. So this looks pretty good. And now we can start building up our design. So I'll select the ellipse tool and I'm going to increase the stroke size to 500. Also make sure your fill is set to none. So you can click on this fill icon and you can just click on this none. So it's going to set the fill to none. So you don't get any fill effect. We just need the stroke. So now I can create a stroke just like that holding control and shift at the same time to create a perfect circle. Or I can also go into ellipse one, ellipse path one and increase the size to around 1500. There we go. Let's position it into the place I want. So I'm going to place it somewhere around there and align it into the center just like so. So that is looking pretty good. Let's rename this to circle underscore O one. Now, if I go into a blending options and change the blending mode to multiply, you can see our circle disappears. But now if I select the layer, right click, go into layer style and add an inner shadow. Bam, there we go. So the idea here is to create a nice cutout depth into the design. So to do that, let's jump into the inner shadow and tweak some settings right here. So firstly, let's increase the size. So I'll increase the size really high. Maybe like, let's go around somewhere around there. And also I'll increase the distance. So let's increase the distance. And of obviously we need to change the angle so I can place it somewhere around maybe there. That looks good. Let's bring down the opacity to 60%. And as you can see, this is looking pretty nice. I can also add 1% of the noise so we don't get any kind of color bendings later on. So now we have our cutout, but you know, when you cut an object, like that you get a little bit of specularity at the edges so to do that what i can do is select the layer go into layer styles and add a bevel and emboss so let's find that and now you can see we get this really nice specularity at the edges but we don't need this black section so what i can do is go into bevel and emboss and i think i need to bring down the altitude so i'll bring that down to zero actually let's bring that down to zero and also bring down the size to four and everything else is looking good to me. Maybe I'll increase the highlight just or maybe touch. So that is looking pretty good actually. Maybe I'll increase the inner shadow a bit so I can go with something like maybe 65. Okay. That looks much better. So now we have our circle. Let's also give it a little bit of animation so we can click on this add icon and add a trim path animation to this. So let's actually go into contents and let's and add a trim path, which you will find at the bottom, which is out of the screen. So you'll find the trim path option. And now we can go ahead and animate this. 
so firstly let's go maybe three seconds forward in time let's create a keyframe on the end property go back and set this to zero so basically now we have a simple circular animation now you can use a really nice cutout design if you want to but what i like to do is i like to go into the ellipse option stroke and change this to rounded cap so you get this really nice look also i'm going to offset the trim path a bit so i'll maybe offset this by 90 degrees and now we have this really nice animation Also, I'll select the keyframes, hit F9 to easy ease those keyframes. So basically, now we need to repeat the same process again. So you know you don't need to completely redo it, but what you can do is let's select this, hit Control D to duplicate it, and I'm going to place this one right over here. Maybe I'll bring down the size of this. So hit U two times to reveal all the properties and bring down the size to around let's go with maybe 1,000 pixels. That looks much better. I'll place it somewhere around there. And then I can go into my bevel and emboss settings. I, I want to change the direction of the reflection, not the reflection, actually the specularity. So I'll tweak this one just a touch like so. So I'll keep it at 174 looks good to me. Also bring down the highlight opacity a bit, maybe like let's go with 70. That looks much better. And I can also change the angle of the shadow. So I'll change this one actually jump into the inner shadow and change the angle a bit so this time i'm going to go with something like that so as you can see this looks much better and i think i'm going to increase the size of this shadow a bit because i don't think that's looking right or according to the way i wanted it to so let's go into the inner styles let layer styles not inner styles and increase the size a bit and let's increase the distance a bit as well and the opacity Okay, that looks perfect to me. Now let's close them up. Let's select the second one, hit Control D to duplicate it, bring down the stroke size to 250. And you know, you can create this kind of complex looking designs as well. So if you want, you can duplicate this, hit Control D and bring down the stroke size to create a really interesting look actually looks really cool as you can see okay so let's actually go with this i think this this design looks much better so now we have that let's select this and i'm gonna hit r to bring up the rotation properties and let's rotate into a different direction because i don't want it to start from here i want it to start from right at the top so right here so now we will have this really cool look that looks super cool. Now I can select this at control D to duplicate it, hit U two times and set the size to 800 and stroke size to 250 looks good. And I'm going to place this one right over here, something like that. And all I have to do is just change the direction of my shadow. So I'll go into the inner shadow and let's change the direction to some actually let's go let's keep the direction that way or oh, and bring down the distance a bit and also the opacity a bit so something like that let's bring down the size okay that is looking much better and also adjust the rotation so i'll go at the very beginning let's see from where it starts so it starts from right here i'm going to hit r and rotate that i want it to start from right over here so we have this really nice look now if you don't want this kind of complex design what you can do is you can just hide those shapes and you will get a much more simpler design maybe this one so you know you get this really nice design as well i can adjust this a bit and there you go there you have your nice cut out look and if you want to make it complex just turn on the shapes and it's going to work hit Control d for this one bring down the stroke size maybe bring down the opacity of the inner shadow just a touch 
there you go so if you want to go for a complex look you can create this kind of cool design and the best part of this technique is you don't need to use circles you can also use any kind of text or any shape that you want so let me just show you that pretty quick so what i'll do is i'll copy the layer style really quick so I'll select the layer style hit control c to copy it let's hide all the shapes and let's select the text tool and let's type in text so i'll call it new let's align it into the center increase the size a bit so you can see it more properly and hit control v to paste that up and then change this to multiply and there you go now obviously you need to tweak some settings because you know the the settings were set according to the circle so i can tweak that up you know play around with the distance play around with the spread depending on the look i want to go for and this technique is really useful for creating some very interesting looking animations so you can use it on a text or any shape that you want so for now i'm just going to delete the layer styles let's change this to normal place it at the back and let's turn that on and now you can see we get a really complex look so i'll just actually hide the complexity and you can see we get this really nice depth into the scene you can of course use any text that you want and create this very interesting animation i can also change the color of the text maybe make it a nice yellow this would go perfect with the purple and there you go there you have your really cool looking design now you can also give a little bit of animation to the text as well so let me just show you guys pretty quick how to do that i'll go into the animate section and add an opacity and go right here into the property section add a position so let's bring down the opacity to zero let's bring down the position to 100 go into the range selector let's make some room right here i'll go to around maybe two seconds set the offset to 100 create a keyframe go back and let's set this to minus 100 go into the advanced properties and change the shape from square to ramp up and increase the easy high and easy low 200 so now we have a nice text animation as well looks really really cool So that is how you can create this very interesting looking design and animation instead of After Effects without using any plugins. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did then please do subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram at dope.motions and also do let me know in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video. I read each and every comment. So that is a wrap for today guys. I will see you guys in the next video. Till then take care and always stay raw, stay creative. Peace out.